Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we are doing our first episode, the first breakdown of our Shal Literature Book Club selection, Why Men Love Bitches. This book is uh, truly the Bible. I read it, I read it like 10, I don't know, 10 years ago. It was published in 2000. And I read it every few years, and truly, I need to read it once a month. It is such an anchor, not in terms of just how to behave around guys. It makes me a better friend. It makes me a better businesswoman. It makes me a better person moving through the world because it gives me the tools, not just like rah rah pep talks, but actual legitimate real world examples of how to preserve my dignity, my goals, my peace, and my boundaries, and how that is going to create, ironically, much better and stronger relationships. Because we think like, oh, I don't wanna be a bitch. First of all, first of all, let's talk about the name. We say bitch like Rihanna. Rihanna's a bitch, Michelle Obama's a bitch. It's bad bitch. It's not psychotic bitch. It's not Bella Thorne bitch. It's not Kate Goslin, Katherine Heigl, Kellyanne Conway. Well, Kellyanne Conway's more of a simpleton, but tomato, tomato, right? It's a woman who takes no shit and people find that magnetic. It is a woman who is a leader. And male or female, leadership is attractive. So we're going to break down this episode, we're going to talk about some of the roadblocks that people are encountering to accepting this advice. Namely, this is outdated. And do I need to listen to this? And the second thing we're going to do in this video is break down the 10 characteristics of a bad bitch and how you can apply these to your life and your circumstances and level up and just feel better. And like I said, this is just episode one. We're going to be doing a lot more, so stick around. But first, be sure to follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO. And also, if you would like a video shout out, a birthday pep talk, something like that, head on over to Cameo and book me there. I'll should be... Also, be sure to follow me on Instream. It's our sexy new platform, uncensored membership, two bucks a month, super affordable. And we're doing like, you know, sexy talks. We have a dirty talk tutorial, a blow job tutorial, a hand job tutorial, kissing tutorial. We're gonna be kind of like going up. We're gonna be doing like a how to be on top tutorial. It's fun and all very like PG, like none of, it's not like OnlyFans, like give me a break. And if you would like to pick up this book, click the Amazon link below, you can get it there, or I'm pretty sure you can get a free PDF copy of it on the Shalligator Reddit page. So the questions that we're gonna be talking about in these videos are from the Shalligator Reddit page. Hi, Nicole and Ashley, two of my fan accounts, quotes by Shallon and Art of War XO uh, run, oh, it's a hummingbird, hi, oh run the Reddit page. They are awesome moderators and it's a really wonderful place for Shalligators to come together and collaborate. And one of you guys just announced you're pregnant. I'm so excited. He's going to be a little baby warm blooded animal running around. Cannot wait. So psyched. So head on over there. You can see what other people are saying. It's a good place to collab. And Nicole was nice enough to aggregate some of these questions and comments into a new Instagram account called Shalligator143. So you can read what people are saying about the book and weigh in and connect. So yes, we're gonna talk, we're gonna kinda like go through this a little bit. And like I said, I think I said this, head to my podcast, Girl on Top, <laughs> if you wanna hear the first three chapters of this. I, I read them the last few episodes and, and do some discussion. So it gives you kind of an easy little primer that you can listen to while you're driving or working out or for me eating. So for the most part, you guys really, really loved this book, but there were a few, the, the criticisms that came up were kind of the same, and it was it was basically that the book is a little, that it's outdated, you know, that it was written in 2000, and we don't really need to be listening to this. So, one Shalligator, <laughs> username and awkward someone, <laughs> love it, fucking love this name. I noticed a couple things I don't agree with with the book, within the book. I think it's because it was published in the early 2000s. As groundbreaking and feminist as it is even for its time, there are still a couple things that are a bit old fashioned thinking, in my opinion. So, and then someone responded with, I was surprised, uh, I'm sorry, I feel like I can't read. The book was written in the 2000s, so I'm not surprised it has some dated ideas. Take with you what benefits from the book and leave the rest. I'm also the kind of woman who doesn't like to play games. I take initiative to communicate my needs and desires, and I'm always very straightforward and direct with my significant other, which has helped immensely. No confusion, no games, no drama. Not wanting to play games doesn't make you a nice girl, it makes you a girl who knows what she wants. I think this is very, very important to discuss. So first of all, the whole like, well, it was written a long time ago. Was it? That was 20 years. I was alive 20 years ago. I was a teenager. And let me tell you, the problems I had as a teenager are the problems I have as an adult in her 30s. The problems 
you guys have as teenagers are the same problems we had as teenagers. Boys who won't communicate. Um, trying to do things to be liked. Giving too much of ourselves. Honey, there ain't nothing new under the sun. You know the phrase, people who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it? That's because the things that happened in the past, we like to think are so different. And people didn't have cell phones. and They were pantaloons. Actually, human behavior and social mores change very, very little. It is a microscopic glacier movement from not only generations, but hundreds of years, centuries to the next. Things come in different packages, but the issues people deal with are all the same. That's why, you know, the MAGA shit, it's like, make America great again. It's like, T.I. said it right. He's like, great for who? Who was it great for? Like, back in the days, like, not black people. I was like, exactly. It wasn't great for women. Like, we had, like, very few rights. We were dealing with men cheating, men oppressing us, men undervaluing us, not being heard in the world. Hmm. Does that sound familiar? The worst thing we can do as hu as women, as human beings, as whatever, is act like, oh, no, 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 no. They don't understand. Nobody understands. This is all new. I'm on this new frontier and nobody's experienced what I've experienced. Bitch. Okay. This is actually exactly what people have been experiencing for, for years, for centuries, for thousands of years. And if you tell yourself that you're just brand new and not, no, that's so old fashioned. It's not like that now. <laughs> okay, like it's your funeral. I prefer to assume things are exactly kind of the way they were in biblical times, medieval times, the Roman Empire, the Victorian era. And I want to gain as much as I can from those scenarios. And I would, I, that's why I love history, because I'm like, tell me. It's funny how history is almost like people seeing into the future. Like when we can look at history and examine how people behaved and outcomes, outcomes of wars, of the flu right? There's a reason we're looking harder at the Spanish flu epidemic than anybody probably ever did because we're trying to get a metric of predictability. And actually, it's been pretty accurate. It's been pretty accurate. Do you think men, men have advanced that much in 20 years? They don't. They're not exactly on the cutting edge of evolution, right? They don't, they're not just like growing by leaps and bounds emotionally and, so and socially and societally. They are single cell protozoas of us, basically, right? You know, sometimes you're just like, oh, I can't believe I love you. You're just so, you're so base. They were like that 20 years ago, guys. They just had frosted tips, really the only difference. So if that's your big roadblock to listening to this advice, wake the fuck up. So I wanna break down a little bit of this, this comment. I'm the kind of woman who doesn't like to play games. Yes, but do you know how many times I have used that line on me, to me, to myself as an excuse for very bad behavior? I'm just going to keep texting him. I don't want to play games. I'm going to ask him out. I don't want to play games. Do you guys watch the Betty Broderick story? It's Dirty John, the new season of Dirty John. In the very first episode, because Betty is like, la, 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 got these blinders on about her divorce, won't sign the papers. Her lawyer says to her, you think that if you don't play, you can't lose, but you are losing right now. And I was like, ha, ah, that's it. That's exactly what I've always tried to encapsulate about this, like, I don't want to play games. Courtship is not the same as games. Games means you're lying. Games mean, um, I, I can't tonight, I'm busy. Bitch, go be busy. I said in my last video, I can't play hard to get. I'm not very good at pretending. When I like someone, I'm like, okay, I wanna see you all the time. I have to be hard to get. I purposely engineer a life that is very full, very busy. I literally cannot say yes to a last minute date, even if I want to. I'm sorry, I've got other plans. I can't sell a lie, but I can sell the truth. So I have to create the truth. So when we say games, get that out of your head that's like you're just on a higher level because I don't want to I don't want to play games. You shouldn't play games with a solid boyfriend. You shouldn't play games in terms of communicating what you want and being empathetic to him. You should play games when you're in the courtship stage and a guy is seeing how far he can push you because that is the game that's being played. And just like they said in that show, not playing doesn't mean you can't lose. Let's go back to the war metaphor. 
You go onto a battlefield. They're like, go, go, go. And you're, you're standing there thinking, you're like, I don't want to play. Boom. You get a bullet in the head. That doesn't mean you want. Like, you don't win. You don't have a protective force field around you because you've decided to opt out. The game is moving on. And if you don't learn how to play it and make it work to your advantage, you are going to get crushed underneath it. I know because I have done that. I have done that. I don't, I'm just, I'm not playing games. I said this to myself literally last week about a guy. You know what? But this is just how I feel. And I'm just going to say it. Who? I picked this up and I got my shit together. I have found that if I'm in the position where I say that to my, I'm just not going to play. I'm just, I'm just going to say how I feel. You know why I'm saying that? Because I'm chasing him. Because he has withdrawn and I am using any excuse I can from the Cosmo bedside astrologer to new wave feminism. I'm not going to play any games. To chase and chase and chase and chase. That's not feminism. That's not ferocious alpha female behavior. It's desperation. That's how I felt in the moment. Desperate, pathetic, lost, longing, missing somebody. And I was going to dress it up in whatever package I needed to in order to sell it to myself, in order to sell it to my intuition and to my dignity, who was just sitting there like, mm, 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 mm. baby girl, no. And how did those things turn out for me in the past? Poorly, poorly. Okay, I spewed out how I felt. If a guy was chasing me the way he should, if he liked me the way that he should, I would never have had to do that. I would never have had to do that. And that is the sick, sad, wrenching truth. When we're in the position where we have to like, come back and I'm just gonna tell you how I feel, it's because he's walking away. That does not mean all is lost. What this book does is tell you how to turn the tide. Let us read from the scripture. A bitch is a bitch with her actions because she isn't willing to give herself up. If the choice is between her dignity and having a relationship, the bitch will prioritize her dignity above all else. The bitch remains the person she is throughout her relationship with the man. She doesn't lose her friends. She doesn't give up her career and her hobbies. She doesn't give up all her time or bend over backwards. And unlike the nice girl, which is the inverse of the bitch, she is not too tolerant of disrespect. Because she is not afraid to walk away, ironically, he becomes afraid to lose her. He who cares the least wins. This is the root of every single negotiation. And if we think courtship is not negotiation, again, bro, it's your funeral. It is. It's a constant push-pull of your needs versus my needs. What's being willing, you know, what are we willing to give up? How can we move towards collaboration? And sometimes it's peace versus victory. We here are lovers. We want to love. We want boyfriends. We want to love. Not everyone we deal with is like that. Some guys are not lovers. They're fighters. They're fuckboys. They're not into a partnership. They're into possess possession, possessionship, possession. I feel like I'm having a stroke. And we have to be aware of these people. And the way we become aware of these people is to, through this book, be constantly and unequivocally concerned with our priorities and our dignity above absolutely everyone else. Whether that's a fuck boy, whether that's a friend, whether that's a parent, we need to put ourselves first. This is how evolution works. If we put everyone else in front of us, we die out. We don't mate, we don't find food. Like if we boiled it down to the most base level, that shit doesn't work. You wanna talk about modern things? You boil things down to an evolutionary caveman standpoint. We have to serve ourselves first. And ironically, that's what's going to keep people in our lives. That's what's going to keep us healthy. So Sherry Argoff, the author of this book I love, she defined 10 characteristics of the bitch. And we read the first few chapters of this book on my podcast, Girl on Top, so you can head over there and listen to that uh, if you want, just a little primer. Here are the 10 characteristics that define a bitch in a good way. She maintains her independence, right? It doesn't matter if she's a CEO of a company or a waitress at Denny's. She has honor and she is, isn't standing there with her hand out. Number two, she doesn't pursue him. She doesn't make her dates with him with her horoscope advises, big Mercury is retrograde, blah, blah, blah. She doesn't chase him or keep tabs on him. He is not the center of her world. Uh. She's mysterious. Ooh. There is a difference between honesty and disclosure. She's honest, but doesn't reveal everything. 
this this is this is the root of the game playing thing because I fully agree with what with what this chickadee said. She's like, no confusion, not wanting to play games doesn't make you a nice girl, it makes you a girl who knows what she wants. And but she said something very important. I'm straightforward and direct with my significant other. Significant other, a boyfriend you're committed to, not with the guy you're on a second Tinder date with. There is a big, big difference here. She's honest but doesn't reveal everything. She isn't verbally putting her cards on the table. I want kids and I want kids by 32 and blah, 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 and if that doesn't work for you. Nope. Nope. Familiarity breeds contempt and predictability breeds boredom. This is true. I get bored of everybody. Number four, she leaves him wanting. She doesn't see him every night or leave long messages. She's on a first name basis with his secretary in one week. Men equate longing with love. Longing is good. The root of this book teaches us the fundamental difference between men and women, which is, if you ask a woman, what is intellectually stimulating? What's a mental challenge to you? She's like, oh, we all say the same thing, right? We have the same answer. Oh, he's smart, he's articulate, he's well-read, he can debate politics. That's not what men say. I mean, that's valid for us. Men say she withholds her time. That's it. She withholds her time. I don't have a 100% hold on her. I don't know where she stands. She keeps me kind of off kilter. It's not about she's got great tits. She's super smart. Like, because we've all, we've all been twisted over a guy and we've stalked their ex on Instagram and we're like, what the fuck? How did this bitch who looks like an insect <laughs> with this hideous butt chin... How did she get this dude for a year? And he's twisted over here. She's a goblin and she looks lame. She, her blog sounds like she's got a head injury. What? She withheld her time. She was doing things that we were not, even though we as shalligators are infinitely better than every other woman. The women who play the game are winning, but it isn't a game. She was probably legitimately withholding her time. She was busy with her dumb friends and her stupid blog and whatever it might be. But she was busy. She wasn't giving everything to this. We can be Oxford educated, Nobel Prize, it doesn't matter. If we are giving too much of ourselves, we are not gonna get the relationships we want. Not only the relationships with boys, we're not gonna get the relationship with ourselves. When I told myself, I don't wanna play games, I'm doing this. I hated myself after, I hated myself. I've said before, a guy can take your heart, he can take your dreams. He cannot take your dignity unless you hand it to him on his way out the door. And that's what I kept doing. Oh, would you like a goodie bag? It's my dignity. There you go. I stopped doing that. And everything started to change. Number five, she doesn't let him see her sweat. She keeps communication from getting messy and avoids communicating when upset. Oh my God, this is huge. This is huge. And this is the whole, I don't want to play games. And we veer into that category of, rah, rah, rah. I'm going to have storm communication, I call it. I am communicating in the middle of my mental storm and it's stormy and it's rocky and it's terrible. Okay, you hit on a girl in front of me. That's interesting. I'm not going to, you're not going to see anything. I am all bite and no bark, sweetheart. I am going to come at you like a fucking arrow out of nowhere. Later, when I'm neutral, when I've calmed down, when I've organized my thoughts, I'm be like, you know what? I saw a side of you tonight that I didn't appreciate. It was incredibly unattractive. So if that's what you feel the need to do, I think that we should, we should uh, take some time apart. I don't think we need to speak anymore. We can redefine the nature of our association. That doesn't sound crazy. That doesn't sound desperate. That sounds like someone who's, I've evaluated the situation, this doesn't work for me. I could not have had that conversation in the middle of the storm. Ah! And then who looks crazy? We do. And it undercuts what's going on. It undercuts the reality and the truth of our message and of their behavior. So it's very important what she's saying. Don't let him see you sweat. And it's not about, oh, I don't care. No, 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 no. You bring this up just at a different time when you feel like you're coming from a place of strength. When she clears her head, she is succinct and speaks in a bottom line way. Number six, she remains in control of her time. She takes it slowly, especially when he wants to hurry. She moves to her rhythm, not his, preventing him from taking control of her. So I'm dating this guy. And we were like making it on the couch the other day. And I was like, you know, let's keep it PG. And he's like, really? And I was like, yeah. He's like, huh. He's like, I kind of like that you find me resistible. Most, most girls don't. I was like, oh, don't they? 
<laughs> but I'm like, I find you very resistible. I was like, there's a few things I can't resist in this world. And they both start with M. Money and mozzarella sticks. I'm like, I can resist you, baby boy. But he was like, whoa, like he liked that. He wanted to go fast. I was like, no, 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 we're going to go slow. And then I was like, hmm, I'm kind of addicted to this power, the brake pumping power, because then it puts me back in control. I'm not just, I'm not swept away. We talk about the swept away phenomenon a lot on here. A lot of unplanned pregnancies are, psychologists, they've done studies on this, are traced back to this phrase, swept away. We were just swept away in the moment. I was just swept away in this relationship. It's because we want to be distracted from what ails us. We want an emotional getaway car out of boredom, stagnation, low self-esteem, trauma, loops, whatever it might be. To avoid that swept away, you become your own getaway car. I go to therapy. I do a lot of, like a lot. I read a lot of books. I dig into everything that ails me so that in these moments, in those little moments, making out on the couch, uh, she just gets swept away because he wants to, I feel bad, it would be fun, I want him to like me. Nah. I don't need a getaway car. I've done it. I have get, gotten in my car and I've driven out of my own issues. So I'm good. Therefore, I have more control. I have more neutrality. And I'm in the driver's seat. Because I did that hard work. It sucks. But it's worth it. Number seven. This is important. She maintains a sense of humor. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It's easy to read this book and get in this like dour bitch the, into the Katherine Heigl mindset. Rihanna seems jovial, gay, fun. No, gay, you know what I mean. Gaiety. <clears throat> she seems fun until you cross. You don't fucking cross Rihanna, right? Same with Michelle Obama. She's sweet. She's giving out hugs. Mm, that, maintain your distance, right? She has boundaries. But within those boundaries is a lot of humor. A sense of humor lets him know that she is detached However, she doesn't treat disrespect as a laughing matter. This is also really hard. I have a good sense of humor. Not a lot actually offends me. And, or if it does, it takes a while for it to like take root. And then I'm like, I don't like that he said that, you know? So I have trained myself to err on the side of not laughing at something, right? Not to just be like, ha ha ha, no, that's right, I'm flat chested. <laughs> Because then, otherwise, I'm not like, I'm not permitting and promoting bad behavior and bad jokes and things that are offensive and insulting or that passive aggressive loop that we can get into with boys where it's like we're, we're it's banter, but it's hurtful. And usually it's like puppies who play fight. Uh, inevitably, there's going to be a, like there's going to be someone who bites a little too hard and someone gets upset and you're like, oh, man, there's now there's two upset puppies. Mm -mm. Number eight, she places a high value on herself. When he gives her a compliment, she says, thank you. She doesn't talk him out of it. She doesn't ask what the ex looked like and doesn't compete with other women. Number nine, she's passionate about something other than him. When he feels he isn't the be all and end all of her existence, it makes her more desirable. Staying busy ensures she isn't resentful if he's unavailable. He doesn't have a monopoly on the rent space in her head. He doesn't get park place. He doesn't get boardwalk. He gets one of those little purple properties next to go. Number 10. She treats her body like a fine-tuned machine. She maintains her appearance and health. A person's self-respect is reflected in how he or she maintains physical appearance. If he tells her he doesn't like red lipstick, she wears it anyway if it makes her feel good. I think this is huge. It's not, notice she said, she's thin. She's got big tits. No, she is healthy. I, have, I get boyfriend butt, you know? Like you start dating someone and you're like, I just want to eat and look at you. No. I really have, have to keep a hold of myself to like, no, I'm going to the gym. No, we're not going to get wasted tonight. I'm getting up. I've got dance class. Mm, no, I've got my hockey team practice, blah, blah, blah. I think it's very, very, very important to maintain that healthy aspect as part of the 360 dynamic woman that you are. It's very hard for us to feel good about ourselves if we don't feel healthy. And however healthy looks to you, great. Like, who cares? If you're healthy, if, if you feel good at 260, great. If you feel good at 120, great, whatever. If you feel good with a shaved head, girl, do it. If you if you got the bone structure to pull that off, shit, I wish I did. 
So we're going to wrap this episode up for now. We're going to be doing some more because there are so many good points about this book. And more than that, there are so many good things you guys have said, but there's some other questions you guys have about it and some things you pointed out that have helped immensely that have really kind of like flipped a switch in your mind. So next time we're going to be back chatting about that. In the meantime, pick up the book, get started reading. And like I said, if you want to hear the first few chapters and some breakdowns and discussion of that, head over to my podcast, Girl on Top. Um, it's out every week. Gonna have an episode out soon. I'll see you later, Shalligators. Bye.